Welcome to FilmmakerIQ.com. Today we're going to be looking at the psychology and science behind color temperature. The way we perceive color is greatly influenced by our cultural understanding. And we all grew up learning that fire is hot and ice is cold. Therefore, red and orange are warm colors, while blue and cyan are cool colors. This association in our mind is so strong that filmmakers can actually invoke a sense of temperature just by the color palette they use in their films. Take, for example, Spike Lee's 1989 film, Do the Right Thing. Doing the yin and the yang, the hip and the hop, the stupid fresh thing, the flippity flop. Oh. I have today's forecast for you. Hot! The film, beautifully photographed by Ernest Dickerson, is a wash in yellows, oranges, and reds, invoking the heat of a long, hot day in bed a neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York. The urban cityscape is a vibrant community full of life, a diverse neighborhood where everyone knows and accepts each other. But things are boiling under the surface. Old hurts are being remembered, tensions build like a pressure cooker, and things are about to explode. Contrast this with the Coen Brothers' 1996 film, Fargo. Photographed by Roger Deakins, Fargo was dominated by blue and gray. Even the snowy white exteriors cast a cold bluish light, so that the weather itself mirrors William H. Macy's character's icy soul. It's a constant reminder of the frozen landscape surrounding him and his inept henchmen. Both these films utilize production design to accentuate hot and cold, but they also push the feeling of temperature using creative applications of white balance and color temperature. When we talk about color temperature, we're talking about the property of white light. White light is really a creation of our own minds. There is no color white on the light spectrum. The color white confounded people for thousands of years. It took Isaac Newton in the late 17th century to finally demonstrate using a prism that white light was really a mixture of all the colors of light. But precisely defining the proportions of different colors and then tying that to temperature, well, that would have to wait till 1900 and Planck's law. Max Planck was a German physicist commissioned by German manufacturers to figure out the best temperature to heat the filament of a light bulb for maximum visible light output for the least amount of electricity. Now, he tried to tackle the problem using contemporary theories of the time, but the equations just weren't matching up with his experimental data. So he devised his own theory, which would later become Planck's law, which describes the type of electromagnetic radiation generated by a theoretical black body at a given temperature. Okay, let's back up and explain that. You see, everything in the universe that has a temperature above absolute zero gives off some sort of electromagnetic radiation, whether that's infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-ray, and everything in between. Even you and I give off radiation, but it's in the form of very low energy infrared, which we commonly call heat. That's what IR night vision goggles pick up. As you increase the temperature of something, it will give off more and more heat, right? Or electromagnetic radiation. If you get it hot enough, it will start to glow. That's when it's giving off radiation in the form of visible light. Continue raising the temperature, and the glow will go through a very specific range of colors, which is mathematically described by Planck's law. And this is what we mean when we talk about color temperature. It's the color of white that would correlate with the color of light of a theoretical black body at a particular temperature. So 
What was the temperature that Max Planck finally settled on as the ideal for a light bulb? It was 3200 degrees Kelvin, which is still with us today in the form of incandescent lighting. In the filmmaking world, this number is also known as tungsten balance. The other common source of light is the sun. The sun's surface temperature is about 5800 degrees Kelvin, but sunlight has to be filtered through our atmosphere and can range anywhere from a correlated 2800 degrees Kelvin at magic hour, or even up to 6500 degrees Kelvin on an overcast day. For most applications, 5600 degrees Kelvin, the color of light on a clear midday, is what we mean by daylight balanced. Now these are two examples of light being created by hot objects that pretty much follow Planck's law. But what about alternative lighting? How do they generate white light? Well, fluorescent lights use a tube coated with phosphors filled with an inert gas and a tiny amount of mercury. When you turn it on, the light is created by the fluorescence of the phosphors in the tube. Unlike hot objects that emit light in all frequencies, as described by Planck's law, fluorescents tend to spike only at certain frequencies, mainly the primary colors red, green, and blue. This still looks like white light to us, even though it's missing a lot of the frequencies in between red, green, and blue. Now, for cheaper bulbs, manufacturers will sometimes increase the amount of green because it gives the bulb a brighter appearance, being that green is right in the middle of the visible spectrum. Unfortunately, though, this can give footage shot under cheap fluorescent lighting a green tinge. Manufacturers do offer fluorescent bulbs of different color temperatures, and they do this by mixing in different chemicals into the phosphors. For photography and cinematography, they add more colors into the bulb output to get a fuller spectrum of colors. So they're not just limited to red, green, and blue. There's yellow and magenta and other colors in there. That way, subjects look more natural. Look for bulbs that have a higher color rendering index, or CRI. A CRI of 100 is full spectrum, like the sun. But for best results, use fluorescent bulbs rated 90 or higher. LED lighting is the newest alternative to incandescent lighting. But they can also present many of the same issues as fluorescents when it comes to a limited spectrum. The color of an LED is based on the material used in the diode of the light emitting diode. Now, there are several ways to get white light, either by using phosphors or by blending different colored LEDs together in a single fixture. Some fixtures even have the ability to dial in your color temperature by mixing the intensities of different colored LEDs. When you white balance your camera, you're essentially telling the camera what color temperature you want to use as a base for white. Now there are traditionally two important numbers you should know by heart. We've already touched on them. 3200 degrees Kelvin, which is the temperature of tungsten lighting, and 5600 degrees Kelvin, which is the temperature of sunlight on midday on a clear day. Many cameras have these as presets, as well as other common lighting scenarios. Almost all cameras have the ability to set a custom white balance using a gray card or a white card. This is done by filling the frame with something gray or white, and then pressing the white balance button, which zeroes the value so that the color that's in front of the camera is deemed as neutral. Now, for much better control, professional cameras have the ability to dial in a specific number for your white balance. This is really great for dialing in the look that you want. If you want a warmer tone, just push the color temperature higher. A cooler tone, push the color temperature lower. And if you're shooting with a camera that shoots in a raw format, well, you can save your white balance decisions until post. A common color temperature problem that pops up is when you have competing light sources in the same shot of different color temperatures. Like say you're shooting indoors near a window and using tungsten light. Now if you white balance to 5600 degrees Kelvin, the indoor light will look really orange. If you balance to 3200 degrees Kelvin, the light from the window will look really blue. Now to get them to match, you need to use gels. Either cover the entire window with CTO, or color temperature orange gel, or more easily, just cover your light with CTB, color temperature blue gel. It's also worth mentioning here that dimming of tungsten lights will lower their color temperature and make them look warmer. After all, the filament isn't getting the same amount of current. Therefore, it's not burning as hotly. So, by Planck's law, 
they will be a lower color temperature. Now, there's no need to adhere rigidly to any of these numbers we're giving out here. Just because we're shooting here under tungsten lighting doesn't mean we have to set the camera precisely to 3200 degrees Kelvin, or that we can't blend different color temperatures in a single shot and mix cold outdoor lighting with warm interior lighting as long as it serves an artistic purpose. But understanding the mechanism of color temperature and why it works this will give you the tools to solve artistic challenges when you're on set. Now these tools go way back. From our earliest moments huddled around a warm, life-giving campfire, to Isaac Newton messing around with pieces of glass, to Max Planck trying to figure out how hot a light bulb should burn, and then founding the basic tenets of quantum mechanics in the process, each step furthers our understanding and enriches our history. So use it. Go out there and make something great. I'm John Hess. I'll see you over at FilmmakerIQ.com.